A man stumbled on an injured she-wolf in the woods and carried it for hours until he reached a vet. Everyone was shocked when something amazing happened after. Jacob lived in the beautiful Alaskan city of Juneau and loved his life there. As a kid, he grew up with his loving parents and older sister Helen in their beautiful house just by the woods. The young boy's parents focused on making their children friendly with nature, so often they would take Jacob and Helen out for picnics and walks to explore nature. Their parents taught them the importance of respecting nature and loving it for what it was. Jacob was particularly drawn to wolves. In his eyes, there were no other animals more majestic than wolves and no sound more enchanting than their howls. Every night, he would stay up to hear them howling in the far distance and fall asleep with a smile on their face knowing they were out there living a good life. While Helen went on to become a prolific writer, Jacob studied science. So after he finished high school, Jacob picked up a part of his life and moved far away to study biology in college. For years, Jacob worked hard at school, and after his long four-year journey at college, he decided it was time to come home for a bit. Jacob's sister Helen still lived in their hometown in Juneau. Her writing career was going great, and she had built a beautiful family with her husband and kids, a nine-year-old son named George and a seven-year-old daughter named Junie. When Jacob arrived, he was excited to spend some time with his niece and nephew. They immediately bonded over everything he taught them about science, nature, and the beauty of wildlife creatures. Junie and George loved to listen to their uncle speak. He taught them how the heart pumps blood, how bones grow, and why they saw stars when they rubbed their eyes. Jacob also taught the kids about animals that he loved, especially wolves. So one day, he finally decided to take them out on a short trip through the woods. There was snow all around, so they would be able to watch the birds, fish, and little squirrels going about their lives in a world of their own. Junie and George were beyond excited. About 45 minutes into their adventure in the woods, the trio was met with something absolutely unexpected. First, they heard a loud, piercing howl cut through the air. Jacob froze and instantly recognized it as a wolf's howl. After all, he had stayed awake listening to such howls for almost all of his childhood. But this howl wasn't like anything he'd heard before. It was filled with anguish and pain so apparent that Jacob immediately knew something was wrong. He asked his niece and nephew to walk behind him and stay close. Jacob steered them towards where the sound was coming from because it also wasn't a good idea to leave the kids alone in the woods. As the three tried to find their way through the inches of snow and snow-covered tree branches, another howl pierced through the woods again this time. It was so close that Jacob could tell that it was coming from a nearby clearing just a couple of feet away. When they arrived at the clearing, the kids gasped in awe at what they saw. Right there, lying on a thin layer of snow, was the most stunning wolf Jacob had ever laid his eyes on. Jacob thought that seeing these creatures in pictures or videos had not done justice to how magnificent they truly are. At first, he didn't move as he assessed the situation. He soon realized that the wolf was caught in a hunter's trap and badly injured. The unlucky thing looked relatively young, its slim, furry body rising and falling in shallow breaths. The wolf was clearly in a lot of pain, but Jacob didn't quite know what to do. The she-wolf looked weak. Her eyes barely open as she lay with her trapped paw. Jacob told the kids to stay put. He tried to inspect the wolf from a safe distance, but the moment he moved any closer, the wolf would growl in warning. From his many years of studying wolves and their behaviors, Jacob knew she was simply reacting out of fear and caution. So he lowered himself to her eye level and started speaking to her softly, willing her to trust him. Although the wolf didn't understand him, his soft tone and slow gestures would prove that he didn't mean any harm and only wanted to help her. Eventually, the wolf stopped growling and watched him with wary eyes. Jacob carefully touched the trap and the wolf's captured paw. By the looks of it, she had been here for many days and the wound was bad, but luckily not infected. She had lost some blood though and she was weak. Jacob knew he needed to get the wolf to a vet quickly. With his heart racing and hands shaking in fear, Jacob released the trap and scrambled back in case the wolf decided to lash out at him. She didn't do that. Instead, she remained on the ground and let out a sad whine from the tremendous amount of pain she was experiencing. 
Jacob knew the wolf was probably too weak to move or even attack anyone, so he did the unimaginable. He gathered the large furry animal in his arms and began carrying her out of the woods. His niece and nephew, Juni and George, followed, watching their brave uncle rescuing this huge wolf with shock and wonder in their eyes. When they emerged from the woods, Jacob walked the siblings to their home and ensured they were safely inside without dropping the wolf. Despite how heavy she was, Jacob carried the wolf for hours, walking on tired legs until he finally got to the local vet. When he arrived, the staff immediately sprang to the wolf's help. The vet said it was unlikely that anyone would stumble on such a scene and still stop to help or even carry the wolf all the way to their center. The vet treated the wolf with the best care, ensuring that she didn't have any infections from the wound. He gave her medication for the pain and treated the wound. Amazed by Jacob's courage, the vet told him that the wolf was so lethargic that she would need some time to recuperate before being released into the woods. Jacob offered to take care of the wolf for the night, reassuring the vet that he had some experience dealing with wild animals. He called his brother-in-law to bring his truck, and they took the wolf back home. They put her in the garage and provided her with food and water. That night, George and Junie couldn't stop talking about their incredible encounter with the wolf. They looked at their uncle with adoring eyes, marveling at his incredible bravery and kindness. Before they went to bed, they peered at the resting wolf through a window and quietly said goodnight. The following day, they said goodbye to the she-wolf as Jacob and his sister's husband moved the wolf to the woods. One evening, a few days after the wolf encounter, Jacob, his sister, and her husband returned home to find that George wasn't in the house. Junie had been sleeping and had no idea where he was. Unknown to them, George had snuck out of the house to search for the wolf. He had been so fascinated by the encounter that his curious mind couldn't hesitate. Unfortunately, George had taken a tumble in the woods and twisted his ankle on a fallen branch. The boy sat on the floor, crying and unable to walk with his injured ankle. After hours, George saw two bright eyes watching him in the darkness. Scared out of his mind, the nine-year-old started crying harder, afraid that something had come to eat him. When the eyes moved closer, he soon identified the mysterious animal. It was none other than the wolf his uncle had saved. Remembering how his uncle had approached the wolf, George spoke to the wolf in a soft voice, hoping to prevent her from hurting him. The wolf watched George with intelligent eyes before she moved closer and inspected his broken ankle. She licked it and whined in pity before turning around and sprinting off. She burst out of the woods and walked up to George's parents' house, where the adults had already started calling for help. When Jacob saw the wolf watching the house again, he went outside. The wolf walked away and paused to look back at Jacob, making sure he was following. She led him to where George lay with his hurt ankle. Jacob quickly scooped up his nephew and turned to thank the wolf, as though she understood. The wolf bowed its head slightly before turning and running off into the woods. For some reason, Jacob knew that this was the last time he'd ever see her, but he would never forget their incredible encounter. What did you think of this incredible story of one man's kindness to a wild animal and how it led to an amazing experience? Tell us what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more beautiful stories like this.